Right here in the middle. Buzz, can you just talk about the first half? I mean, you took the lead. It was tied 24-24. They go on that little run. How deflating was the Vesca V3 right at the halftime horn? I thought we did okay the first 16 minutes. Um, I thought we were connected. I thought we competed in, in, in many respects, probably the best 16 minute stretch we've had since the last time we played them two weeks ago. Um, I think it was 12 or 13 seconds left, deep sideline out, 125 hit the three. Um, we tried to change up what we were doing defensively. Obviously, it didn't work. I didn't think. Um, we count turkeys three stops in a row. We did a good job in the first half. We got zero in the second half. I thought the second half was a completely different story in every possible way. Um, they're really good. Um, they're really good here. And everything they were good at, we, we did not cause any problems, particularly in the second half. Just how effective was the Kai Ziegler's performance, especially just affecting a game without making a lot of I think he's so underrated. Um, elite on the ball defender. Incredibly fast with or without the ball. And then I think their transition, um, secondary action, he's the engine. And when it gets into a half court situation, um, I thought zero was really good tonight. Three causes a lot of problems for everybody. But I actually think that five, in many respects, coordinates all of that. I think they play with great space. There's not anybody that you don't have to guard, whether they're playing with 30 at the four or zero and 11, and they're playing big. Um, you, to some degree, have to guard two and three similar in regards to their ability to catch and shoot. Um, and I think 25 as a secondary ball handler with what he's done in his career here, to some degree, you have to pick your poison. But five commands so much attention that sometimes I think he's probably maybe unheralded in regards to He's a conduit to so many things that they do on both sides of the ball. Stay in front, on the left. Sorry. Did Tennessee do anything differently on Wade after that spurt there in the first half where he had those three straight threes? Well, I, I think we probably shot too many threes for us across the game. Um, the spurt for sure helped us. But we probably, not just four, we probably stayed on that a little bit too much. We, we, we are reliant on offensive rebounds. We're reliant on getting fouled. And sometimes if you take too many threes, not that we're great at shooting them, but if we, if we shoot too many, we're probably not gonna have as good of a chance to offensive rebound. I think tonight was the worst that we had been in that regard in SEC play. Um, and similar from the free throw line. Um, we, we need to get fouled. We need to make a higher percentage of our shots at the free throw line when we do get fouled. But some of that is interconnected in that if we're at the free throw line, we can have a little bit of front court pressure. Um, we probably settled too often for threes that led to no offensive rebounds, no fouls for Texas A&M, but led to Ultra fast points in transition off one or zero passes by Tennessee. Let's go right side, white cap, and then red cap. Well, I'm not sure at College Station that Tennessee did much of a do and a walk at the same time. It, 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 um, yeah, th I think they probably played those two guys more versus Missouri than any other game thus far this season. Um, you would have to look at the numbers. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that 11 or zero, zero were in in College Station. Uh, some of that was foul trouble with three. Some of that, I think coach went small um, in the second half and, and it, 
became a track meet for us. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember to be honest if they played together. If, if they're able to do that lineup consistently, play well with that lineup consistently, how does that change this basketball team in your eyes? Well, a coach would answer it better than I would. I, I just the, the eight guys that are playing. If you play eleven and zero together, it probably gives you more maneuverability. Um, whether it's not like thirty can't play on the perimeter. I mean, he is a perimeter player. He's just strong enough and tough enough to guard whatever forward the opponent would have. But I also think that zero, um, even though he looks like he's an at the rim guy, he's really comfortable with the ball. And I know he's right-handed, probably Bob birth, but he's he's almost ambidextrous to me. Like he's he's really good with his left and he's almost a right shoulder left hand comfort level as the same as left shoulder right hand. And so I know he's the five per se when 30's in, but he's just as comfortable playing the four from what I've studied. And I also think that 11 probably has a different, and we call it phases, but their transition alignment. Zero and 11 put a lot of pressure on you at the rim. And if you don't guard them or you stand behind them, they're gonna score or you're gonna foul them. And now that just gives five the creases that he needs because 25, uh, three, two, they're so far in the corners that when you help up, if you help up on five driving, they're shooting threes. And so that's why I think five is the engine, but zero and 11 put a lot of pressure on you at the rim. And both 11 was good against us, uh, but they were playing probably a little different in the second half at our place than they were throughout the game today. Let's go left front and finish with right front. Yeah. Buzz, you referenced the rebounding. What was Tennessee able to do to, to rebound the way they did today compared to what you guys did in college state? Uh, probably a, we, we, they got to the paint a lot more today. Um, I think they had four middle drives in the first half, which is good for us. Uh, but they had five for the game at our place. And we're in rotation. Any team's going to be in rotation when the ball's in the paint, whether it's off the pass or the bounce. And now all of a sudden you're you're probably going to struggle on the glass. They had that ten offensive rebounds, as did we. But their their percentage is what matters. Yeah. So they offensive rebounded thirty percent of their misses, and we offensive rebounded twenty two percent of ours. And coming into tonight, we were first in the country at 41%. It's, it's not not good enough for us on that side. Fish on the right. Well, talked about the new team and the three-point shooting. Is it – because sometimes when you start so well as a team from three in a game and then you shot the ball well against these guys last time, yeah. can that kind of be like a bait that it's hard to uh, – Well, if, if it is a bait, we for sure – what what are the what are country people say hook line and sinker? We, it, it was a bait and we took it. Um, I would say that that's probably the highest number of threes that we've taken this year. Now some of that some of that is because they're an elite defense, and so some of those uh, I wouldn't necessarily describe as bait. It was late in the clock, and we couldn't get it to the paint off the pass or the bounce. But I do think that we probably took too many threes in our shot diet for what gives us the best chance to win. All right, you guys make sure that I said congratulations. Has Coach already been in here? No, Tell Coach that I said congratulations for his 800th win. Wasn't that tonight? Tell Coach I said congratulations, please. Thanks, thanks,